Today on Badger Academy, we will be exploring something potentially game-changing within Path of Exile. How to exploit corpse generation for optimal detonate dead damage. Hold on to your pickaxes, exiles. We are digging deep. Welcome! It's your friendly neighborhood Badger here, and I am once again back with a lesson in the deep mechanics locked behind Path of Exile's closed doors. Sometimes, this game can be confusing. Really confusing. Risa. What the f is that? Holy sh. So, with this second episode of Badger Academy, I'm sacrificing some of my own sanity to revisit an old experiment I conducted back in Blight League, exploring the exact mechanics behind the corpse generation of the skill Desecrate. We will explore all sections of this experiment, ending with conclusions and practical applications of our findings. The colour bar you all know and love is down below. If you're impatient and want some juicy info, you can skip ahead, but I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. The journey I took to get there was just as, if not more, interesting than the results. I'm going to start with explaining my original experiment. So let's get going. For those of you who don't know, Desecrate is a skill that spawns five corpses on the ground, with which you can summon spectres from, or explode from skills such as Detonate Dead and Volatile Dead, among others. Desecrate also adds the current spectre you have into your summon pool, meaning that if I have a Solar Guard as a summon, I will also be able to Desecrate that Solar Guard in any zone I am in. In the most recent league, GGG increased the pool of summonable monsters through Ray's Spectre, also meaning that there are many more monsters to choose from within our Desecrate pool. Many people have been using this technique with the skill Detonate Dead, which explodes a corpse to deal fire damage equal to 6% of the corpse's maximum life, to summon very high base health spectres and therefore increasing the average total life pool of every Desecrate. But I began to wonder, is there a way for me to game the system and give myself a higher chance to spawn spectre monsters in the desecrate pool by summoning more total spectres? In the following sections, we will first explore my original experiment and then move to the recent revisiting of some qualitative data gathering. Thanks to everyone who joined me on stream to slog through so, so many pages of PoEDB and the wiki, as well as countless hours of in-game testing. Seriously, who would ever attempt something like this? Me. I did. Let's get going. In this first section, I will be showing you the results of two different experiments conducted entirely within the Path of Exile engine. The first thing to note is that these experiments were conducted in the Blood Aqueducts, and this information will be vitally important in one of the final sections as we explore the practical applications of the information we gather today. Before talking about the second experiment, let's get into the first one as it sets the tone for the rest of the video. I began with an initial test of 100 sets of the Desecrate cap of 10, using Spell Echo plus Desecrate, initially with one Spectre summoned and then two Spectres, calculating the amount of Spectre corpses spawned per Desecrate cap to try to determine whether having more Spectres summoned increases your chances of spawning more Spectre corpses. Though 1000 corpses isn't a hugely quantitative data set, it still gave me the information I was looking for. The results are shown. For one Spectre Summon Desecrate Caps, we got a total of 0.89 Spectre Corpses per Desecrate Cap, and for two Spectres Summoned, we got a total of 0.76 Spectre Corpses per Desecrate Cap. As you can see, there is a little amount of variation. In fact, it hinted at the opposite of what I originally hypothesized. However, as this was only over a sample size of 100, these values aren't truly accurate. Keep this in mind. I wasn't convinced that there was any difference, and honestly, why would there be? It doesn't really make any sense from a programming standpoint. So, thus, the conclusion was drawn early. The number of spectres summoned does not increase non-generic minion spawn on Desecrate. This was a little boring, to be honest. I wanted to discover something profound, something insanely build-changing. But, I began to think. Do multiple different spectres each have self-contained spawn rates when desecrated? Meaning, if I have, for example, three different monster types summoned as spectres, will they all share the same average per desecrate cap summon, or will they all function on their own different spawn rate? I knew there was much more testing to be done, so I developed a new hypothesis. The amount of different spectres summoned increases the ratio of spectre corpses to non-spectre corpses in the desecrate pool. 
To begin, I decided on testing all the way from two different summon spectres to seven different summon spectres through the same technique used in the previous experiment, 100 sets of Desecrate Cap of 10, tallying the number of spectre corpse spawns in each set. This is the time where I will mention that I have collated all the data in this video into a Google spreadsheet, of which there is a link in the description of. If you want to pull that up, you can follow along. And let me tell you friends, we discovered a rabbit hole leading us into some crazy information. Basically, through spawning 6,000 corpses, I gathered enough data to draw some pretty interesting conclusions. Let's bring up a graph, shall we? This graph shows us that there is a strong correlation between the number of different spectres summoned and the average amount of spectre corpses in every 10 corpses spawned by Desecrate. What is even more interesting is how close to a linear progression this seems to be. Due to limitations within Path of Exile, as well as theoretical maximum number of spectres people would actually be summoning, I didn't continue the experiment past seven spectres, but I feel this is more than enough information to go off. And though this information is wildly tasty, there was still much to explore in terms of viability, actuality, and variance. Cue the next section. Oh boy, I've been dreading this section. Not because it's boring information, no, quite the opposite. This is some of the most interesting stuff in the video. I've been dreading it because of how difficult it was for me to discern the data found in this section. If you want to watch an 8 hour VOD of my journey through experimentation with finding and summoning the highest health monsters, there is another link below. It will expire in about 5 days time from the upload, so if it's not working, you know why. But I wouldn't recommend watching it, because I'll explain everything here. In a nutshell, I wanted to test the seven highest life spectres that are summonable and desecratable to be able to translate the previous data into practical information people can take to improve the DPS in their builds. To do this, I started with a lovely spreadsheet of literally every spectre summonable monster in the entire game. Collated by Gary Hoffman. And yes, there is a link below as well to this sheet. Here, I was able to sort each monster by their life multiplier and look at the top seven highest health monsters, cutting out duplicates because they share the same name and therefore the same summon pool. Finding this was amazing because all I had to do was take these seven right here, find them in game and summon them, right? Such a piece of cake. Wrong, 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 wrong. To begin with, there is actually a lot of information left out of the data mined information on PoEDB. In particular, there were three obstacles I came across. The first obstacle. Many monsters listed on PoEDB don't even show areas in which they can be summoned, or their models don't load so I couldn't even use my visual knowledge to guess where they were. This was basically overcome by brute forcing and crowdsourcing with my Twitch chat until we finally discovered where these monsters were. The second obstacle. Some monsters shared the same name with much lower health value variations. And the third obstacle. Some monsters listed on PoEDB are actually unsummonable as spectres or can be summoned but cannot be spawned with Desecrate. To give a summary of all I went through to find the actual seven highest desecratable monsters in Path of Exile's 3.10.1G patch, we will go down the list and mark off each and every monster that cannot either be found or cannot be desecrated. Let's start with the giant gladiator statue. Stated on the spreadsheet, this monster has a whopping 18 times life multiplier. How insane! And better still, the wiki says these monsters are just found in the marketplace. Yeah, them. How easy! But wait. Scrolling down, we can see there are actually many variations of the giant gladiator statue. This threw me into such a confusion. How was I supposed to know which one was the correct one that had the 18 times multiplier? But then I spotted something on the PeeweeDB website. All variations had the tag Statue Large, except for the 18 times health one, which was tagged Statue Large Guardian. The word Guardian led me down a path. Maybe in a Guardian fight there were some giant gladiator statues? Bingo! We got it, and boy was it a tough find. Through self-inflicting psychological pain, I narrowed it down to the third phase in the Constrictor Elder Guardian's boss fight. Like, seriously? How specific was that? And it turns out, as you can see here, these monsters are actually tagged as unique in the game, so they can't actually be summoned. Bye bye, 18 times life statue. As you can see, things started to get hairy from here on. I was becoming a mere shadow image of myself live on stream as I slowly descended into madness, being swallowed up by numbers, data, and the thought of having to go to find so many hidden monsters. So, here's a montage.
Yay! That means we found seven tried and tested monsters that we can input into our data collection to begin to output some practical numbers and applications, as well as starting to see the sweet spot of desecrate damage. But what does this mean for the practicality of spectre spawning? To begin this section, let's take a look at another graph. By inputting the information that we found in the previous sections, we can see the percentage damage increase with Detonate Dead per number of spectres summoned, and it's kind of crazy. I didn't expect this much value, but straight away we can see that around 3 to 4 spectres is probably the most optimal amount, also considering the investment for more spectres. No one really wants to be dual wielding Midnight Bargain ones. When I originally found some information about this back during Blight League, I posted it all on the Path of Exile subreddit. It gained a fair bit of traction and even drew the attention of Mark GGG, who commented something quite interesting. Spectre corpses and area corpses are two separate lists, which get added together. Constructing the area corpse list will add the base desecrate monster if it would otherwise be empty, so there will always be at least one monster contributed by that list rather than the spectre list, once the two are combined. What we can extrapolate from this is that monsters in the zone, plus your spectres, are added together without waiting into a pool of summonable corpses from your desecrate skill. For example, in all of the testing I conducted, there were 9 summonable monsters in Blood Aqueducts naturally, then you would add the number of different spectres you have summoned into that pool, let's say 5, making a total of 14 monsters overall. From this, we can compare this formula of spectre count divided by the spectre count plus zone monsters to see how close our real world testing is. Here is the expected results next to the actual results of testing. Note how the expected results are all a little bit higher, around 0.4, give or take. To me, it looks like I can mostly attribute this to human error during the counting process of the corpses, as sometimes a corpse may have been completely hidden underneath a bigger one, for example. If we say I missed one corpse in every 20 corpse spawns, which is entirely plausible, we can correlate our findings to the expected results with this formula, then leading us to be able to apply this to any zone with any number of monsters. As well, we can take the base life of monsters at any level and put them all into a calculator to determine the breaking points of percentage damage increases. Pretty neat, huh? Here's the calculator, but again, it's in my spreadsheet below on the final page. So, what are the practical applications? Well, there are a lot. This can tremendously increase your DPS on corpse explosion skills by a whole lot on average. Keep in mind, there is obviously still a sense of randomness at play in terms of corpse spawns. Also, corpse explosion skills prioritize map monster corpses over desecrate corpses, so this information is much more helpful in boss fights without many other corpses around. But isn't that where we want most of our DPS anyway? In fact, the rooms in which you will be wanting the most DPS, such as boss rooms like Uber Elder and Cirrus, you actually get the most DPS, as the zone monster desecrate pool is only one single monster. Check this out, this is your damage increase in a boss room. 308% increased damage, which in PoE speak is more damage with the top three health spectres, Lithomancer, Stoneskin Flayer, and Syndicate Enforcer. Holy moly, that was a lot. I think I need to go hibernate for a while. My brain has literally been throbbing for a couple of days with all of this math and spreadsheet making. But that is pretty much it, everyone. I hope this information can help you go away and theorycraft some pretty interesting corpse explosion builds. Let me know in the comments below of mechanics you want me to explore next, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. We are nearing in on 10k subs, so let's see if we can hit that within the first 12 hours of this video going up. Also, half an hour from the uploading of this video, I am going live at twitch.tv slash thisisbadgergaming to get ready for Brittle Knees Bingo League, in which we will be trying to use this technique that we've talked about in this video to our advantage. That's it from me. Until next time, Badger, out.